どんなになんか悪い日があってもそれをなんだろうそこだけにフォーカスしないで、うん、そのまあ明日はまた新しい一日だからって、うん、<笑>あそのポジティブな感じで。Before we start the video, I wanted to say one thing. この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Oh man, I always wanted to say that. Anyway, today's video is brought to you by Cambly. 英語を勉強したい人はいますかさまざまな先生と英会話するなら Cambly を使いましょう。必要なのは Web カメラ、マイク、安定したインターネット接続だけです。キャンブリーはスマートフォンやタブレットでもご利用いただけますそして教師を呼ぶそして最後英語を練習あなたの英語学習の目標達成のお手伝いをするフレンドリーな教師がキャンブリーであなたをお待ちしております携帯でレッスンできるしパソコンでも作るおっヘイおっヘイ Bro so I used to live in Tokyo for two years in 2004 下のディスクリプションボックスにリンクを載せますし、私のプロモーションコードを使えば、15分無料でカンブリで使えます。We're going to be interviewing Sarah today. Hi, hi. And she is an English school owner of a j u b i l e Oh, yeah, I'm already starting. <laughs> 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 okay. Should I do like yo? Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, Max here again. I have a new interviewee today. This is Sarah Muko. She is a Japanese born and raised in Tokyo citizen.、Mm -hmm. Now she owns an English school called Jubilee、yes. in Nashiro Kanedai. <laughs> no, Shibakoe. <laughs> Shibakoe. <laughs> and I don't even know. We, you went to Sophia University too, yes, right? I did, yeah. But I don't even remember meeting you in Sophia. I know, but that's probably because I was at NFLA. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You weren't. So <laughs> everyone assumes everyone who speaks English is in FLA.、Mm -hmm. But、yeah. you were in. I was in Bungaku Bae Bunka, so English literature. It's a very Japanese y department, I would say. Some people spoke in English, some people, well, most people didn't actually. Yeah. And it was like half and half. The classes would be half in Japanese, half in English. What did you study? The、oh. mandatory classes, mostly, they were translating, like translation.、Mm -hmm. So we would get like stack. Like papers to translate every、really? single week, like twice a week, we would have to translate and we would just sit there, and then the teacher would just go one by one and pick on us. Seems way harder than FLA. <laughs> <laughs> you know, FLA was not a joke. I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard it was really difficult. Really?、No. <laughs> From who? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, make know. Fun of, I make fun of FLA way too much. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> well, you went there, so it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, because、so、you experienced it. Basically, you're a business owner, and、mm -hmm. we wanna, I wanted to ask you today a few questions about.、Okay. And we already talked about it, but、mm -hmm. just for the viewers, I、yes. want people to know like, how you kind of got started、mm -hmm. being an owner at English school and also get some of your backstory because.、Mm. You're full Japanese. You're、yeah. born here, raised here.、Mm -hmm. One reason why I want to have you on here is because a lot of people still don't know that、mm -hmm. in Japan there are people that go to, well, one, they just study super hard and they、yeah. do speak English. Or、mm -hmm. like you, you went to international school.、Yeah. And you said, you know, dochi ka te yu to ego no hoga, it's a lot. Comfortable.、Mm -hmm. Speaking wise, definitely, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I think that's because I went to an international school, like early childhood, I guess. Yeah. That's like the, you know, when you kind of learn everything. And if you go to an international school, for example, in middle school, you wouldn't really be able to speak English that well. But I went from the second grade. So that's probably why English is more, I'm more comfortable speaking in English. Yeah. You yeah. said second grade all the way to. High school.、Right? Um, to middle, middle school. End of middle school. Yeah, like, Chugak Sanes is what's like. like You're basically like 13 years old. Basically. So, first grade, I went to a Japanese school and then I was bullied there. So, then I was trying to think of a way to kind of get back at them. And then the only way I knew how was to be able to speak in English because that was something that they couldn't do. So I was like,、um, perfect plan. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've never heard of somebody have this plan. But. <laughs> yeah, so I talked to my parents and I told them I want to be able to speak in English and the fastest way is to go to an international school. And they understood. So yeah, they, they let me go. And then from second grade until. Like ninth grade, I went there. So, real quick before we get into that topic, I also did want to first jump into your, the, the current stage of your English、mm. school. Right. It's Jubilee, and、mm -hmm. you started working there how long ago? Or not working、um, there, when did you start it? Five and a half years ago. And、yeah. you're like 
23. 23-ish. Mm -hmm. So originally I started it with my ex and then we ran it together for about three years and then he left and that's basically when I took over everything. So for the past about two years, I've been running it on my own. I know your ex and you still like talk to him and he's, yeah. you know, there was no like bad blood in like this, Definitely this takeover. Yeah, we still Just talk. wanted to make that clear. <laughs> yeah, we still talk. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you started running the school by yourself. Um, a couple years ago yeah a couple years ago yeah before that i was more the head teacher so i would be in charge of teaching all the students there um, making the curriculum and everything like that um but since i took over i had to kind of step back from teaching and then focus more on management so i've been delegating a bit more to my employees yeah. and then yeah now i manage a little bit more and i still teach my kids typically mm -hmm. it's after school like during after the school, school year right? yeah so from like 3 p.m ish what are the kids like Ages, age-wise. Uh, from five years old up until 18, so senior year of high school. Some of your students are like there for years, right? Yeah, they've been coming for years. And I guess they speak perfect English now, thanks yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. No, they do, yeah. yeah. And this one student I taught for five years, uh, when she first came in when she was in... Chu Ni or Chu Sang, I think, mm -hmm. and then she went into university recently. And um, the best thing was, I honestly thought that we would lose touch after that, um, uh -huh. after she went into university. But then she would still contact me, text me, and then she would even send me pictures and tell me, "This is what I'm doing in university." Really? Yeah, and she would. Uh, like, she's a freshman. Right yeah, now. she's a freshman. Yeah, and she would tell me. Um, she would send me pictures and say, "This is what I've been up to." And recently, we actually had a coffee together. She um, she told me everything about her university and how. She got a boyfriend now. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a very deep relationship now. Exactly. Yeah, no, nice. but it's really nice. And, and she even told me like, um, oh, you were more than a teacher to me. Um, and yeah, like she was saying how grateful she is. Does and, she like, call you Sarah now or still Sarah Yeah, she Sarah calls Sensei. me. She calls me Sarah. Um, other students, they call me either, yeah, Sarah Sensei or Miss Sarah. I wanted to know like, so you're Sarah, but mm -hmm. if your parents are full Japanese yeah. and like, how did, is Sarah, do you have kanji? I do, yeah, I do, I do okay. have country. Yeah, I think my mama uh, got it from the Bible. Yeah, she's oh, Christian. Really? So yeah, yeah, she got my name from oh, the Bible. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. I'm not Christian, but she is. So, okay. Yeah. So that's not a typical Japanese name, though, right? I get that a lot. <laughs> and I get asked that a lot. People are, are, they always ask me, is that, is that a Japanese name? Like, is that your real name? And I was I mean, like, oh. Kind of, it can be Japanese. Like, there's mm. a lot of new Japanese names anyway. Yeah, I always thought it was Japanese and maybe like American, so I thought it worked both ways. So, whenever people ask me, is that a Japanese name? I was always kind of confused and I was mm -hmm. like, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, actually, I wanted to know about like uh, opening mm. the English school though. Did you find any challenges running the school by yourself? Or was there any challenges being young and a woman or anything mm, like that in Japan? Or? I guess so. I guess I try to make sure that I wouldn't get looked down on, I guess, uh, because I'm young and I look young. And um, I think uh, some parents, they might kind of be concerned mm -hmm. because um, the owner is, you know, like still in her 20s. Yeah, that was kind of a struggle. And also, well, I have great employees, so they were able to help me a lot when I started. Uh, started running it on my own but mm -hmm. in the beginning I definitely felt the pressure to make sure to keep it running and to you know make sure that we don't um we don't go in debt or yeah. yeah we definitely struggled a bit there but what did you do to make the parents not feel like oh um, she's really young or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. yeah whatever <laughs> I give my card um, and I always have to say daihyo no like mukodes and then um, they would be like oh wait you're the owner and you know they'll kind of be taken back by that and they would always comment oh but you're so you know you're still so young mm -hmm. and so I did have that issue but then I made sure um, I explained it really well um, and I made sure that um, my kego was on point, maybe not uh, the kego. all the time, but <laughs> <laughs> I made sure that they uh, they felt comfortable and you know that they that I was able to explain everything like our curriculum and um, how our school works and everything like that. I think they felt really comfortable, and also because we're a school, so um, and we're still a small school, so I try to make them feel, I guess, at home. I don't know. Hopefully, maybe you can get a couple of students <laughs> from this video <laughs> without trying to. Put you on a pedestal i think it's, i think <laughs> it's pretty amazing i think it's great you, you know you're doing that no you're literally an entrepreneur you could yeah. say <laughs> like uh. even though if you're not comfortable <laughs> saying that yeah you, yeah you are and a lot of people would be like oh that's cool like she's mm. very successful right um everything seems like it's going great for her but mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i wanted to take it back because like it, it wasn't always like i wouldn't even say it's easy now mm. but i know like from what we talked about the other day there's yeah 
a lot of steps that you had to take mm-hmm. to get to this point. It's it's becoming more common, but mm-hmm. a lot of people still don't know that like Japanese people like you who speak English fluently mm. exist. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I I actually kind of wonder like, do people think you're American? Like, what what Depends is the? Depends where I go, but what happens? Um, normally I go to Hawaii, so. Oh, okay. Uh, There's no. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, the old fit in. Perfectly yeah, there. when I get tanned, people think I'm local. Um, that's oh, really? for sure. So you don't mind tanning? Definitely not. Yeah, there's some, you know how Japan is with the I know. white skin. But I see, know. look, we got somebody <laughs> <laughs> who's like the, the umbrella tanning, thing. Yeah. yeah, and I never do that. I love tanning. That's uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do in the summer. Day off. I'm at the park, tanning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so started talking about it already. But you're mm. born and raised in Tokyo. Yes. And you went to Yochien. In a Japanese yo-chen, school, right? Yochen Nihon, yeah. I, I went to uh, a Japanese Yochen. And then first grade, I went to a Japanese uh, private school mm-hmm. and then got bullied there and then transferred to an international school mm-hmm. from grade two. And then in middle school, um, I started getting bullied again and then that was pretty bad. What kind of stuff? What were kind they? of bullying? Um, I guess like I would be told things like um, like you're the dumbest or like the ugliest person in the world or like you know <laughs> things like that. It's um, just like really like dirty kid stuff. Yeah, like, exactly. Like it would affect you when you're younger. Yeah, yeah. It definitely destroyed my self confidence. <laughs> That's for sure. What they say in Japanese though? Like, um, how would they say it? It was. I feel like it was mostly in English, but. Um, ah, soka, international school. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I mean, we would code switch, so um, yeah, it was like both, but uh, mostly in English. Why do you think that happened? You know, usually you would think mm. that. I mean, you're full Japanese, you're going to English school. Like, my image was mm-hmm. like more people would be a little bit. I mean, I know there's bullying everywhere, mm-hmm. but I feel like it, I felt like it would have been more chill. Because it's an international school. Yeah. yeah I mean, I yeah. know there's bullying at like American, mm-hmm. at, you know, English speaking schools yeah. all over the world. But yeah. Like, um, what happened? Probably because I was in like a Japanese group. Like, in an international school, you get um, different groups, like popular group, Japanese group, and like, I don't Japanese know. Japanese group? <laughs> 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 like <laughs> <Nihonjin> group. <laughs> <laughs> the popular group would be like so like uh, America Jin that to ka half that to ka um and Nihon Jin no group and so ko ni tabu ite and then I was really shy and an mm-hmm. introvert so you know they get they're targeted yeah yeah, yeah so that's, true. that's probably why so yeah I didn't really feel like I belong anywhere and sometimes I would eat my lunch in the bathroom because I didn't like know where I would go because it was like it was better than you know sitting with them um during lunchtime and then get picked on i mean initially you were bullied at a japanese school at Ichi- mm-hmm. Ichinense, right? yeah and then you entered Ninense mm. through this international school yeah but it was okay until from like Ninense to yeah i mean there would be you know kids like picking on me here and there but it wasn't really a big deal uh-huh. um more so yeah middle school was definitely the worst um and then because i didn't feel like I didn't belong anywhere in school. I wanted to kind of feel at home when I, you know, go back home, but that wasn't really the case either because uh, my parents split up when they were, uh, when I was in the fifth grade, I think. And then uh, my hair turned all gray, and then I got IBS, and then my mom was mentally ill. So from like, probably like when I was in grade three, um, all the way up until like when I was in college. Grade um, three of. Uh, elementary school uh-huh. yeah and then all the way up until when I was in college um she I basically grew up seeing her like try to take her own life every other day on really bad days like she would try to harm me as well and I think when my dad left it just escalated because her focus basically you know shifted like all towards me so there was no one else in the house I mean so. were you switching back and forth mom's house dad's house oh no no i was living with my mom and so only my mom basically yeah her focus is on me to this day i really don't know what it was but she would basically try to commit suicide like she would cut her own wrist um and i would see that basically every other day and uh, she would try to jump off buildings or she would try to overdose on pills and things like that did you have to stop her like yeah i stopped her when uh when i was small like i really tried to stop her and um i i tried to take you know like the like a knife or you know like everything 
away from her um mm -hmm. but um and then i would like sometimes have to call the ambulance because you know she she said she overdosed or she said she took too many pills and things like that so i would try to help her as much as i can but then on bad days she would come at me and then she would try to like burn down the house when i was in it or she would try to like she would get a knife and like try to like come at me with it and stuff like that so um even at home i didn't really feel like i belonged there so even in like in school and at home i was just like I didn't really know where to go. I mean, this is a lot to unpack. Mm. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I know. I mean, I mean, now, I know now. Like, you can try to like look at it. Not so. I mean, you're laughing yeah. now. Like, yeah, I don't mind talking about it. And now that I look back on it, like, I think it's just you know made me who I am today. So. If you didn't hide like knives or like yeah. stuff, she would mm. actually like come at you. Sure. Yeah. Um. I mean, I couldn't hide everything. You know. I mean, it's there, so it's in the yeah. kitchen. So. Um. Yeah, and then she would just come at me with it. But I think by then I, I did like have strength as well um, because I was already like probably like upper elementary school or like even in middle school. So um, I was able to defend myself, but I would have like bruises everywhere because she would, you know, like um, be really aggressive. And, Were you, like, did you tell like your dad or like I anything? I did, or? yeah. But then there was just nothing that, that I could do or he could do because I mean, he wasn't living with me and all I could do was just tell him what was happening. And you know, it's not like I can call the police on my own mom so yeah. at the end of the day she's still my mom and I wanted to help her and I wanted to calm her down I guess so yeah. I did stay um, with her until uh, probably 21 but yeah. when I was 21 I just I couldn't handle it anymore so I just yeah. left I, I have no idea what that's like I mean mm -hmm. just even listening I'm just like you know yeah to think you know you're going to school and getting bullied yeah. and then going home mm -hmm. and like this is going on and you said your hair turned white like, yeah yeah like completely from um, the stress, I would assume, the trauma. Yeah, um, the, the timing definitely was, yeah, that. Um, when my parents split up, uh, it just started going all gray, and then, um, yeah. You eventually switched, though, right, from that... Mm -hmm. uh, the international to the international school, school right, yeah. to um, a normal Japanese school. To a normal school. Japanese school, yeah. I mean, looking back on it now, I kind of wish that I had fall back or I stood up for myself, but I was a kid back then and I couldn't. So mm -hmm. um, I decided I want a completely new environment, and so I switched to a Japanese school, but it was a really strict all girls Christian school, so the change was just. I mean. Did, did you make that decision? Like, um, was it a joint decision? I think, well, my mom and I discussed, and of course my dad. I think uh, that school had something to do with uh, the church that my mom was going to. Mm -hmm. We were able to get some kind of recommendation letter from the church to get into the school. I don't quite remember the details, but um, it was easier to get into that school, and also it was really close to my house. Did they teach English or teach anything in English? Yeah, they, they had English classes. But I mean, it was like just to teach English. Exactly. And it I mean, it was a normal Japanese school, so everything was in Japanese. So that was definitely one obstacle, yeah. the language barrier. I was able to speak Japanese because, I mean, I grew up here and I spoke in Japanese with my parents, but it was different because I couldn't read kanjis or I couldn't write. Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was really humiliating. I would just like get stuck on every single kanji and I'd be like, um, and then I'll look up at the teacher and I'll have to wait until he uh, would tell uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and back then it's like, uh, you only have like your denshi jisho or like yeah, exactly. a real jisho. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. <you're> like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. not an idiot. I just don't. I, I just can't read. Yeah, I have to stand up and I would like hold the book in my hand and I'll just be like, <laughs> I'll be like the. <laughs> How, how's your kanji now? I'm still like pretty much like the same. Oh like, really? <laughs> I, I like nantoka nantoka kan. You know, like yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> no, I do everything is like too. it's like something something. <laughs> And I just skipped the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, since going to Sofia, because my department was half in Japanese, uh, and then also yeah. starting my, my business, um, I had to deal with a lot of countries and um, like business email and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's gotten much better. I think I would be able to read the newspaper, um, probably get Ooh, stuck like here sure. and there, but yeah. <laughs> but what was like the Japanese high school like? like? Oh, wow, it was completely different. It's not even like a Futsu no Japanese yeah. gakko. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's private and it's, you know, Christian. And uh, every single morning we would have Dehai, so we would have to pray. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would have to listen to the teacher talk about the Bible. Was it set up like a Japanese classroom? Like the no, same style? Yeah. Like 
the typical Coke local and like local. yeah yeah exactly like 40 something 40 plus students what was your um, uniform like was it um, um like a western style what's like, a western style uniform like pan- <laughs> i would imagine like pants oh no it was uh, a, it was like uh like ao no check no skato and then it had to be like Hizamade, I think. I think it was like. Did you roll up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, but I was actually Everyone, really good. <laughs> oh, really? You didn't do it? Yeah, because I didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't do that. But my hair would turn um, turn brown because uh, because I had gray hair. I had to dye it every single month, mm-hmm. or I have been doing that for so long that even if I dyed it black, it would just turn brown anyways. Um, and every single month, a teacher would come up to me and say, "Sarah, it's that time of month," and then I would have to go dye my hair black. And it was ridiculous because we weren't allowed to dye our hair, but it was okay if it was black. Yeah. So, they, you know, it's, there's so many articles that they talk yeah. about, like why, you know, no dyeing your hair mm-hmm. because they assume black is the normal. Yeah. But some people actually don't. Exactly. Like, don't like, I would wonder hair. what would happen if you're like a, you know, Caucasian person just so happened to go. Oh, to like, right. I know. think that's okay. But yeah, because, but see, why like, is that okay? Yeah, but because. <laughs> know that I'm Asian and I'm uh-huh. Japanese they expect me to have black hair uh-huh. so yeah they would just be like okay you need to dye go dye your hair black yeah that's pretty funny because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know at the time you're probably like no this sucks yeah no I definitely did I, I did dye it though every single month and uh-huh. made sure that it was black this is a different topic but mm. Did people think you were pretty cool because you could speak English and like do the English classes? Like, Towards well? the beginning, yeah. I just, I stood out because, I mean, because of my hair and just the way I looked. And um, I don't think I was, you know, pulling off the whole uniform look, the Japanese what? uniform Wait, look. Wait, why not? I just, I look different, I think. For our school, there were only like handful of students that would come in from high school because everyone else, they were, uh, they were already there from middle school. So they all knew each other. Mm-hmm. And then I came in. Uh, from high school so the mm. new kids you know like the old kids would always kind of pay attention to you know the new ones and they'll uh-huh. kind of be like oh that's a new girl <laughs> but like even among it's, like all those like i was so just, funny yeah it just reminds me of like these anime where it's like oh, mm. can you say exactly, exactly. it's kind of like that <laughs> yeah like the, it's like the a, main character. yeah it's like a pack of like like new students and uh-huh. you know all the the older not older but the the kids that were already there they would definitely be interested in getting to know them and kind of seeing like what they're like mm-hmm. but even among those um students they found out that i speak english and i came from an international school and i don't speak japanese very well so they were very interested and um they would come up to me and they would always ask me this can you say something in english and i would always <laughs> hate that because i didn't know what to say yeah it's like uh English, you know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, exactly. And uh, I was like, um, <laughs> can you like give me something? Give me, give me like, a script. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> then I'll be happy to like, yeah, I'd be happy to do it. But um, I was just like, um, I, I don't know what so, to say. Uh, they didn't but... say that to me too. I, I went to high school. And oh, right. For, yeah. Like, five months. Mm. It's like, hey, go to Nanka, eat there. Yeah. It's like, Did you say um, something? Okay. <laughs> no, I'd be like, my name is Max. Oh, it's just like introducing yourself. It's like, okay. <laughs> but then I felt really awkward because it was just to me that was like, atarimai, you know, like if yeah. I, I, it's atarimai that I was able to speak in English because I went to an international school. So it was nothing special to me. So mm-hmm. even though, like, of course, I was like flattered and I was happy that I could, you know, make friends and they were interested in me, but I just never knew how to react to that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, from high school, you eventually. Mm. You did have to, I know you took TOEFL. I did, or, yes. Because you had to get into Sophia yeah, University. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure TOEFL was pretty easy. Well, I hadn't really studied English for uh, probably like in three years because um, I went to the Japanese school. Oh, yeah. So I was kind of worried. Um, that's the main reason why I didn't apply for FLA because I didn't have confidence that I would I'm get pretty, in. I'm pretty, almost 100% <laughs> sure you would have gotten in. I, uh, well, it after... Really... After, yeah, going hard. to Sophia, yeah, I kind of thought maybe I could have gotten into FLA. But, uh-huh. um, yeah, at the time, I, I didn't have confidence because I was out of that kind of environment um, for three years. Yeah. So I decided to go to Ebunka and, um, yeah, I took the TOEFL. And I actually got in in September. And uh, everyone else, they get their results in uh, February or something like that. Mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to tell anyone 
um, that I got in because that's kind of how it works in a Japanese school. You have to oh. be like super sensitive. Really? About yeah, what you say. Like you know, in, um, I didn't know that. <laughs> in an international school,、um, when you get into college, everyone、uh, posted on Facebook saying like yeah, accepted. Yeah, I got in. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <I'm the best>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and people will congratulate you, and they'll be like, "Oh my God, congratulations!" But that's not how it works in a Japanese school. So you're not allowed to say anything because there are people that are so well studying to get in. So I had to keep my mouth shut. So I only told probably like two, three people, like my closest friends. Wow. And then within an hour, almost everyone in the school knew, <laughs> and people that I had never talked to would come up to me and be like, "Oh my God, you got into Sabia?" Really? They spilled the beans. They spilled the beans. <laughs> like, oh like, no! And、Georgie. I was like, Yeah, I don't like. Because <laughs>、yeah. everyone thinks Jochi is sugoi. In a Japanese school, I guess. Yeah. Even when I got stopped by the police one time、mm-hmm. because I was like on a bike. Yeah. I was like, ah,、oh, my God, this is so mendoksa. Yeah, yeah. I just, like, show my Jochi card. Yeah. And they're like, oh, Jochi. Oh really? <laughs> sugoi. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Just, like yeah. by a cop, I was like,、yeah. just okay. Let, yeah. Just let yeah. me go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have your job later. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, yeah. Jochi has that kind of reputation. No, it does. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. How were you actually like treated in Jochi? People were nice.、Um, again, people in my department thought I was an FLA, so they were like, <laughs> "Why are you here? Like, are you in the wrong classroom?" And I was like, "No,、But、I'm here." <laughs> why do they think you're an FLA though? Is it your looks? I think it was just the way I was dressed because I wasn't like. I don't know, like shorts and then like, yeah, like tank top. Because、um, like Japanese girls, like we know, like they have a s- certain way of dressing. Right. Yeah, I was very like far from that. I would go in the classroom with my shades on, like shorts, tank top, flip flops.、So. <laughs> yeah. That, okay. Hundred <laughs> percent. I would assume you're FLA too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so、uh, yeah, people people、uh, were kind of、uh, staring at me, and they would be like. I think she's in the wrong classroom, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and people like they didn't really talk to me,、um, so I would kind of have to be the one to go up to them and, and talk to them.、Oh. So,、uh, but it was okay because they were super nice. But I definitely did struggle to go to、um, classes in Sofia as well because I had social anxiety and I didn't even know that I had social anxiety until I was in college. How did you even、um, find out you had social or like what was、um, the symptoms? Basically, I would have to. I cared so much about what other people thought about me and how I was perceived. I guess so. I would have to get everything done perfectly, like all the assignments,、um, before going to class. So I would think about what the teachers would ask me in that class, and then I would make sure that I'm fully prepared. And if I felt like I was not prepared, then before the class, I would normally get to the class like 20 minutes before、mm-hmm. it、um, started, and it's like super early. And then I would just stand there, and I would just go over my notes. And then if I felt unprepared, I would start getting like panic attacks. And then I would just turn around and just like leave, and I wouldn't be able to like go into. Oh, the you would just leave the class.、Mm, I couldn't. I couldn't sit through it. But yeah, I、uh, I thought that I was just shy.、Um, I didn't think that I had a problem、mm-hmm. or anything. Um, until one day, I came across this YouTube video where this girl was talking about what it's like to live with social anxiety. And then when I listened to that video, I was just like, Oh my God, this is this is my life. Like、mm-hmm. she's. Describing my life, so that's when I found out I had social anxiety,、um, and that I wasn't just shy. I mean, that must have been like for years, and you just didn't know, right? Yeah,、like. exactly. I had that since like the first time I was. I started getting bullied, so、yeah. <laughs> pretty much my whole life. And then, yeah, and then in college, I realized I had that. And then after maybe a year or two after that,、um, I got depression, and then I just. I had that probably for like a year, and of all the things that I went through, that was definitely one of the most difficult things that I had to go through, because every single day I just felt like I was trapped in a tiny little box and I couldn't like breathe and I didn't know how to get out and like、mm-hmm. yeah I just felt like I was suffocating every day, but of course I wanted to be a good role model for the kids so because、um, I was already working、um, I already had my business so this this one right yeah the current one so I would pretend like everything is fine and.、Um, You know, just be energetic and smiley. And so at work, I was fine. But then as soon as I finished, I was just like, like I would just be depressed and just、uh-huh. go home. How did do you even get through that? You know, after yeah. I mean, I mean,、um, it was going on for so many years, and you yeah. Didn't even know. I I wonder. I wonder if it's almost because you're like jumping.、Mm. I mean, you obviously you had a hard time at the house too, but、mm. it's like Japanese school, the English school. Yeah. Both bullied, and then back to、mm-hmm. Japanese school, and then you go to Jochi. 
And I don't know. If you went to FLA, who knows what it would have been That's like. what I thought. Yeah, I kind of always wondered that. Um, if I went to FLA, I feel like I would have kind of found my... It's not Me. like my... Your like, people. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like my people. Yeah, um, place that I belong. But because it was university, I didn't necessarily have to stick with the people in my department. Oh, yeah. So that definitely helped. Um, did you I, hang out uh, at Building 11? I did, <laughs> <The> yeah. <cafeteria. laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. FLA is just like... もうそこ行ったらみんないるみたいな。そう。みんな授業もサボってるし。あれ、おいさ、だって。アクチュアルデータ、when <笑><笑> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would go there. <laughs> yeah, but so you eventually, I guess so until just a couple years ago, you were still mm. kind of struggling with. Um, yeah, I was, I was, I definitely had depression. What, do you um, think it was like an identity thing, or what do you think um, it was? I don't think it was an identity thing. Obviously, I had that in high school for sure because I tried to fit in um, to the whole like Japanese environment. Mm -hmm. So um, I tried to act like. Like all the other Japanese girls around me, so I would try to dress like them. They all liked Hello Kitty, mm -hmm. so I didn't even care about Hello Kitty. Like I hated Hello Kitty, <laughs> <Really>? but, then, <laughs> but then everyone liked it, so I was like, okay, this is probably a way to fit in. So I got the <laughs> sticker. Like, I'm gonna be yeah, okay, a Hello Kitty fan. <laughs> exactly, and then I got the sticker, and then I put it on like the back of my phone, or I would try oh. to dress up like uh, like one of those uh, what do they call like dudes socks. Um, like Jeez. ギャルが like shiroi. Oh, like, oh, like the oh, white ones. Yeah, like shiroi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like know, scrunch up. Yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah. Really? Do you yeah. have a picture of that? <laughs> <laughs> Can I put it up it's here? It's like uh, that's uh, that's gonna be like for I'm gonna take it with me to my to my grave. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look pretty Japanese though at that point? Yeah, before? like everyone had bangs at the time. Uh -huh. Um, all the Japanese girls, but yeah. I didn't. Um, because this was basically my hairstyle my whole life. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I figured, okay, I have to have bangs because everyone else has bangs. So mm -hmm. I, I got bangs and then my hair was black and I put the Hello Kitty sticker and then um, on my day off I would like wear one of those like dudes socks <laughs> and then like go out to Shibuya and like take Purikura and stuff and like that. And then you're tan. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying you're a gyaru? <laughs> I wasn't gyaru but then I like on my day off I would like try to dress up like one sometimes uh -huh. um, and it was fun because I kind of felt like I was someone else, like I wasn't me. Mm -hmm. But then obviously soon after I realized, okay, this isn't me, like I feel super uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And then, especially when I um, entered college, I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm done. Yeah, like, you're this done with is that. like, yeah. I went back to this. <laughs> yeah. So I did have that like identity thing, but I don't think that was the reason why I got depression. I think it was just, um, um, I mean, the pressure from work as well, just uh, having to run it on my own, that was definitely um, kind of scary. Yeah, I guess everything was just, um, it just built up, like everything that I went through just mm -hmm. kept building up. And then I never really did anything to solve it, I just mm -hmm. kept ignoring it. And mm -hmm. so eventually it just led to depression. And then definitely went through that for like a year. Eventually I just told myself this isn't how I want to live. And that, uh, you know, I only get one life, so I don't want to feel like I'm stuck in a box and I can't do anything like I want to be able to laugh like everyone else and enjoy myself so I decided to try to like push myself outside my comfort zone mm -hmm. and um go to like social events and things like that um and mingle and um, that definitely helped and also doing this job helps because you know it kind of professional wise I always have to be energetic and smiley and mm -hmm. like you know outgoing mm -hmm. so it definitely helped me as well you have students who obviously look up to you and mm, yeah that I guess that, like that that's thing. you were saying like you wanted to be a good role model yeah and, like, it does help too that mm. I know you're saying that you're pretty passionate no honestly I think it's like a like my calling um I can't think of a job that's more rewarding than this like personally uh -huh. um and yeah like I love what I do and it's like that quote, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, it's a job. So sometimes, like, you know, in the morning, I'd be like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, being realistic. But, uh -huh. yeah, like, all in all, like, I love what I do. And, like, this is definitely my passion. And um, just seeing the kids... For me to be able to inspire the kids, for example, I taught them about poverty and they were just super inspired to help the poor after that lesson. Um, and they would ask me like, oh, where can I donate money? How can I help the poor people? I want them to, you know, I want to help the kids go to school as well. And just hearing that um, and seeing 
that I was able to inspire them to help the poor. You know, it was just this, these are like high school. Like, uh, no, they're like, actually grade four. Really? They're <laughs> yeah. so young. I know. So but, that's why I was really proud. But it's, I mean, it's, I think it's important too because, I mean, I don't know about all Japanese school, but it's, yeah. it's kind of hard to sometimes feel that the rest of the world outside Japan is actually、mm-hmm. like real. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to say like narrow minded, but they can be a little bit just because they're really like sheltered in the Japanese school. I would say it's to... hard because. It's Japan. Exactly. It's,、uh, yeah. It's not like the America where if you speak English,、mm. you can still like find news from around the world that's yeah, English. Yeah, exactly. And, like, yeah. You know, the, there's so much news and,、mm-hmm. and information in English,、mm-hmm. but the amount of information in Japan、yeah. is so, so small and I know, limited. Yeah. yeah. So if you're, wow, so you're. Doing that for you know, grade four kids, like I guess so, world poverty. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah like, exactly. What... Like, I don't want to just teach them English, like, it's not just about the language. So, I want them to kind of you know, be able to expand their knowledge and、um, know because、um, they don't know anything about charity. Whereas,、um, when I went to the international school,、um, we would have these、um, not charity events, but、uh, we would have, for example, a read a thon where we can donate money,、mm-hmm. um, we can read books and then donate money, and then. You know, we knew where the money was going, like、mm-hmm. we knew where we were donating to. So I started that in my school as well, and we would do read a thon. I would tell the kids where they're donating to,、mm-hmm. and then they would,、uh, yeah, some of the kids are really inspired. Gosh, you're doing, yeah, you're doing so much for these kids. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, and I feel like、Thank、that's、you. where your passion comes from, right? Yeah, like, I it's think like, so, yeah. And I mean, you basically said it was just something in your mind that you're like, I just want to live the life that、mm. I feel like I should be living, right? Yeah, like, exactly. It, was、yeah. it just like a. Thing where you're like, I've had enough, I'm gonna change.、Um, I think it was just like, like gradually.、Um, it's never easy, like, I think, especially anxiety. Like, I'm not gonna like, I still struggle with it.、Um, sometimes, like, you know, good days, I would have good days and bad days. But even on bad days, like, before I would just be so focused on. On, I guess, the negative side of like, you know, my、mm-hmm. life and everything like that. But after I got out of dep- depression, I was able to kind of think, I guess, more positively and、mm-hmm. uh, be able to say, well, today's just, you know, a bad day. Like, it's a bad day, you <laughs> yeah, know? So, tomorrow will be a good day. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, obviously, like, some mornings I would be, I would have like bad anxiety. I'd be like, oh my God. But then, yeah, I would always tell myself, like, it's still the morning. I can, you know, I have like 24 hours to turn it around. So,、mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that positivity. I would not say that it was just like a like, thought and I just changed. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it was like gradually. Did, was, were things good ever?、Um, you know, you, were, you used to work at Abercrombie. Yeah. Said, like, was, <laughs> For like a brief, yeah. yeah. A brief oh, how、idea. brief was that? Less than a year. Oh,、um, really? Yeah.、Mm-hmm. But I remember you said like you felt like that was your kind of like your element. I mean, yeah,、uh, definitely. Like, I liked the work environment for sure because、uh-huh. it was like international and、uh, there were people from Sofia.、Yeah. Um, so it was definitely better than, I don't know, working at like a Japanese. Yeah. You know, and you've never、place. really worked at a Japanese. No, place. I've never done that. No. Right. Yeah. yeah Which I kind of knew good, that I wouldn't you, fit in. <laughs> yeah. You avoided it. It's probably a good thing. There's a lot of、uh, bad. You know, work culture.、Mm-hmm. Right, in Japan. yeah, I heard that, yeah. yeah. So I was just like, ah, I'm probably not. But you're pretty、be. distant from that, so. I guess so. And I think a lot、yeah. of people who might watch this, like, always have the、um, impression that, like, Japanese work life is, like, you know, salary men is, like,、mm-hmm. the backbone. And then, like,、right. office ladies, same thing.、Mm-hmm. But I, I do have some Japanese viewers now,、mm-hmm. and, like, they might have social anxi- anxiety like you do. Yeah. Nihongo de so you, like, a message to God. Nihongo de message. How do you, like, like, push yourself, like, outside of your, you know, You're asking、zone. me. I know. Hakono soto. Hakono soto ni. Itte kudasai. Go outside the box. I don't know if that's why. <laughs> <笑>なるべくどんなに何か悪い日があってもそれをなんだろうそこだけにフォーカスしないでそのまあ明日はまた新しい一日だからってそのポジティブな感じで <笑> Yeah, see, this is the thing. Like, I, I, my brain just like switches to English, like, you know, and Japanese. So, like, I get, I get confused when I'm saying. Yeah, c o d e s w i t c h i n g Yeah, no, c o d e s w i t c h i n g And then I just like, I switch to English. I'm like, oh, wait, no, I'm speaking in Japanese right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that happens a lot. Yeah.、Um, like, um, So, for me, so, the shigo to ga sugoi, nandaro, kodomotachi ga irukara, kodomotachi no tamini, chanto, sonke sareru yo ni janai kedo, chanto, shta otona nareru yo ni, tika, chanto, shta so you. あのいい例になれるようにっていうのをいつもあの考えながら行動はしてるからそれ
なんだろうそういう自分が熱中できるものとあとはまあ新しいことに挑戦することと、うん、どんどんなんかいろんな人とコネクションを作る、so, いろんな人と会って、うん、いろんなコネクションを作ればなんかいろんな,なんだろういろんな人が見れるしいろんな人と話せるからなんかあこういう考え方もあるんだなって。勉強になるから、うん、やっぱりその経験を増やした方がいい、ね。いやいや、I think so。うん、いや、そういうのがあれば、なんだろう、なんか自分も徐々にこんなんじゃダメだなって、なんか思ってくるから、い、う、や、ん。Yeah. So you slowly start, I guess, find your,、うん、find your way. I yeah, guess I guess、say. so. Yeah, that's definitely how I did it. Like, I think it's really important to have、um, goals in life because my goal was always to, you know, inspire the kids and then also for my school to grow. And then my next step is to hopefully open another school somewhere else in a different area. And then ultimately, if I can turn it into like a proper international school, of course, that would be amazing. That but would be. that'd be amazing. I mean, of course, it's a big dream, but you and, know, you're gonna dream. And then、big. you'll be cultural sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mock your goal. なんだろう毎日仕事行ってても、like I'm the type of person who can't work for the money,、mm-hmm. so お金のために働くんじゃなくて自分が好きなことだから、そいつも月曜日になったら憂鬱っていうのができないから、mm-hmm. so、um, yeah just like enjoy what you do and like have that goal so that you can work towards that.、Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really important. I think that's a great final message. Because <laughs> <laughs>、uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. you know I want to leave off with something like that. Thank you very much. Thank again, you. Sarah, for doing this. <laughs> Thank you for,、yeah. for inviting me. And、mm-hmm. I'm glad you guys all got to watch this video. I'll put the link for Sarah's English school、yes. in the description. Yes. Just in case, any, <laughs> yeah, in case any students want to、yes. join and、mm-hmm. uh, learn English. So,、yes. <laughs> other than that, thanks for watching. And this will be the end of this video. Stay tuned for more videos coming your way soon. All right. Arigato. Thank you very much. Thank you.、I'll、see you next time. Bye bye. Alright. <laughs> ah, Thank you very much. Let me check、I、to hope, make、uh, sure. I hope I didn't like screw anything up for you. <laughs> no, you didn't. Let me make sure the cameras are recording still. <laughs> I hope that he put it quiet. Like, <laughs> to like, do that all、oh, over、no. again. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't recording. <laughs> Once again, this video was sponsored by Cambly. If you want to speak English as well as Sarah but don't live in Tokyo, make sure to use Cambly. You can use the app as long as you have a smartphone or computer. Links will be in the description. Ego no renshu, gambate!